Good morning. My name is Rena Shafshuga, and I'm president of the United Methodist Women of Whitefish Bay Church. We are so pleased that you could join us today to celebrate the wonderful gift of Jesus and the joy he brings to our lives. We have a heartwarming virtual Christmas program planned for you this morning. I was presented with the idea of having a virtual Christmas program this year, and, and the outpouring of responses was overwhelming. Many of members of the church offered their talents to make this event possible. May this Christmas program of Joys of Christmas fill your home with, today with joy, your heart with love, and your life with laughter. In the spirit of celebrating the birth of Jesus, let us give thanks. Our spiritual life chairwoman, Cheryl, will provide us with a devotion at this time. And I've been a member of this church for about 45 years. So um, I've spent many Christmases here, and I love this church and all the people in it. And I'm sorry we can't get together. But Christmas is upon us. And for many, it's going to be quieter this year. COVID-19 has filled our lives with caution and reserve. Shopping online is not nearly as satisfying as browsing in our favorite specialty shops and or entertaining has been scaled back a lot. I came upon a poem that speaks to different kind of shopping spree. And I hope it inspires you to shop for less tangible and possibly more valuable gift items for this Christmas season. The name of the poem is Heaven's Store. I was walking down life's highway a long, long time ago when suddenly I saw a sign called Heaven's Specialty Store. As I got a little closer, the door came open wide. I shook my head and looked about. I was standing there inside. I saw a lot of angels. They were standing Enjoy, but shop with care. Everything a Christian needs is in this specialty store. Take all that you can carry, and you may come back for more. First, I got some patience. Love was also in that row. Further down was understanding. You'll need that wherever you go. I got a box or two of wisdom and a bag or two of faith and I couldn't miss the Holy Spirit that was scattered every place. I stopped to get some strength and courage to help me run the race. By then my basket was quite full, but I knew I needed grace. I didn't forget salvation. Salvation was given free. So I tried to get enough of that to share with you from me. Then I started toward the counter to pay my growing bill for I thought that I had all I needed to do my master's will. As I walked up the aisle, I noticed prayer, and so I tucked that in, for I knew that when I walked outside, I'd run right into sin. Peace and joy were plentiful, sitting high up on a shelf. Songs and praise were hanging near, so I just helped myself. And then I asked the angel, tell me, how much do I owe? The angel smiled and said to me, just take them and use them wherever you go. So I smiled and said, no, no, what do I really owe? And the angel looked at me and said, your bill was paid by Jesus a very long time ago. Please bow your head for a word of prayer. Thank you for the creative and talented people responsible for gathering us together to celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. Let us always be mindful that he is the reason for the Christmas season. Bless all those less fortunate than ourselves and lead us in ways that we might make this Christmas meaningful for all. Amen. Merry Christmas. Hello. Hi, I'm Sue Stanley. And I'm gonna share a favorite song of mine of fairly recent one. It's called Star Child, and it kind of tells the picture of all the people in the world 
May Christmas come to everyone, regardless of race or creed or um, social status or anything. Thank you, Sue. That sounded wonderful. It was great to hear you sing that. Excited to hear you sing. <laughs> good afternoon or good morning, I guess, to all of you who are watching this. I'm pleased to be able to sing for you today. My name is David Hine. Usually I sit behind the organ, and today uh, and Neil asked for me to sing a song for you. And I've selected uh, the Johnny Marks setting of I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Of course, that's a Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem. Uh, one, one thing that might be of interest to note is that he's composing that, or he's writing that poem, rather, at a time in the nation's history that also was full of quite a bit of division right around the time of the Civil War. And so it seems like it's a text that is enduring in the sense that it's um, capturing a feeling that may even still exist today. So I'd like to sing for you, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. I thought as now this day had come, the belfries of all Christendom. Wrong so 
church in uh, the San Diego area. I am also Rosemary Schrader's daughter, and I am just delighted to have been um, asked to share some Christmas music with you today. I love this song that I'm going to do because um, it tells the Christmas story, it celebrates the baby in the manger, but it also takes us to the man on the cross. It reminds us of why Jesus came. So as you hear this very familiar melody, I invite you to just soak in these lyrics of love and grace that our God has for us. Oh 
Merry Christmas. from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 and 3 and 6 and 7 the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy they rejoice before you for unto us a child is born a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hi, I'm Nancy Batchelder, and I wanted to share a poem that I had written um, a couple years ago, and it's um, in honor of my mom. As I sit here in the silence, gazing at the Christmas tree, each ornament tells a story of a heartfelt memory. A trip to the islands, a fur baby who's long gone, the nutcracker from the play, or one of 12 from that song. A Santa from my mom that she brought back from her trip, an angel that forever holds my niece's lasting grip. A stained glass bluebird I gave my mom that now belongs to me, wishing she could share just one more Christmas around the tree. A nativity crafted to feed the strays shouts, remember please those simpler days when in a manger a baby lay unaware of his role to play. The felted tree from Sunday school sewn by my daughter's tiny hands, some driftwood and the seashell filled with the ocean sand. A kindergarten handprint of my son so long ago, each ornament, a gift, a story told so everyone will know. But for now, I sit in silent awe, gazing at the Christmas tree, saying prayers of gratitude for each precious memory. And I did bring that bluebird to show you. Thanks. Hello, I'm Rosemary Schrader, and I want to wish all of you a blessed Merry Christmas. I'd like to thank Neil and our musicians for sharing their gifts and for blessing us with their music. During the holiday season, it is easy to get distracted from things that take us away from the true meaning of Christmas. And so today we gather to remember and joyfully receive the gift of God's love in Jesus and share it with others. Today a few women will share some of their favorite things, their most personal and memorable ornaments and other items, items that are meaningful to them. I imagine most of us have those favorite ornaments and smile every time we take them out of the box and put them on our decorated our homes. I'm thankful for these women today who are sharing with us and delighted to introduce the following. We will see Betty Brandt, Cheryl Suspinski, Bernice Kissinger, 
Pastor Janet Hartel, Jane Heidemann, Sally Ipson, and Cheryl Montague. I, Betty learned this um, as a child of five in her church and she has recited it many, many times over the years and still at almost 90 can recite it as she did. And I am just so proud of her and so, uh, so honored and blessed well, that she um, said yes to doing this and, and this is just great. And I will also share that our theme being about joy um, is perfect for using Betty because that is her middle name, is Joy, right? Right. right. So, Hallelujah. Merry Christmas, everybody. And joy to all. <laughs> and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up out of the city of Nazareth unto Jerusalem to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife. And so it was that while they were there, her days were accomplished. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. But the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Betty. I Hi, I'm Cheryl Sapinski. My husband, Tom, was very artistic, very creative. And through the years, he made a lot of our ornaments. When we were first married, we made things like this out of felt. And um, he, cut, he designed it, and then I cut them all out of felt, and then we stuffed them together, and we had a very colorful tree that year. The next uh, ornament that he made was this little toy soldier. It's made out of a, a clothespin and some popsicle sticks, and he painted each face just a little bit differently. And then a few years later, he made these clothespin uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And uh, that was his a contribution to Christmas. Then he got real clever with his carving, and he carved this out of a block of wood. Uh, he designed the colors, of course, and uh, it hangs from this little knob on top. And so he made about five of them, because by then we had five grandchildren, and he wanted one for each of them, so he was busy that year. And then the next one he made was this guy. Um, it was done in uh, 2010. And again, another Santa face. Um, and uh, just so uh, exacting and it shows some personality. Blue eyes, of course, because Tom was Santa and he had blue eyes. And then he made this one. That was the last ornament that he made. He made um, six of them, of course. One was for his mom and um, the five others were for the grandchildren, and they each have a different color uh, shirt on, so they couldn't get them mixed up. And so here's Frosty. So through the years, it's, my, Christmas is absolutely my favorite time of year because I'm reminded of the creativity that my hubby had.
in decorating our tree. Hello, I'm Bernice Kissinger, and I was born in, well, actually, I was raised in a small town in eastern Pennsylvania, about 60 miles west of Philadelphia. I was born in 1925, so I just celebrated my 95th birthday, and I'm very grateful I can remember all of this. Um, because it was in the late 20s and the early 30s, there was a Great Depression, and so there were no Christmas tree lots in that time. So my dad would go out to the mountains. There were low mountains around Pennsylvania valleys, and uh, he would cut down a tree, mostly a cedar tree, bring it back to the house, and put it in a, a coal bucket, a bucket of coal, because that's what we had to anchor the tree. The coal was used for heating the house at that time. And so he would um, bring it into the living room and we'd wrap a, some uh, brick colored crepe paper around the bucket so you couldn't identify it. And uh, tie the tree to the wall where pictures were usually hung. And then we started to decorate. And one of the fascinating things about our ornaments were, they were mostly made in Czechoslovakia or Germany and we had one that was a little girl's head, little girl's face, and she was so cute. And so here's, this is not the real one, but this is a reproduction of it, but very similar to the one that I was, I could put on the tree because I was the oldest girl. And I just was fascinated with her beautiful blonde hair because we were all brunettes. So, <clears throat> and then we would decorate it. I got to hang that one on the tree because I was the oldest girl. and. Um, and then we would trim it with tinsel and our other ornaments and tinsel and then icicles and the icicles were made out of aluminum foil. And uh, it was just a real special time for us because when we went to Christmas morning was the only time we ever got an orange and a box of candy. In those days, oranges were not plentiful at all. Anyway, the, the men's Bible class at church presented candy and orange to all the kids in town and we were so thrilled to go meet Santa Claus and then get our candy and orange. It was all such a special time in our lives. I'm so glad I can help you out with some of my history. Thanks, Bernice. I'm Janet Hartzell, Associate Pastor here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. When I was first asked to be part of this video, I really hesitated for a moment because I wasn't sure what I was going to share. I'm not a terribly sentimental person at Christmas. I work so much during Advent and Christmas and Christmas Eve that I sometimes just to get through it is, is my goal. And yet, truth be told, I do love some of the trappings of Christmas and especially I love nativity scenes. I'm not quite sure when that love started in me. I think it may have had to do with a scene that my parents got me from the Art Institute of Chicago. But since then, I have gathered quite a few, nothing terribly uh, unique or extraordinary, but mostly fair trade items that I really have come to love. And I also got a chance to see a wonderful collection of nativities at the Upper Room Museum when I was in Nashville for a conference once. They have a big collection of uh, nativity scenes from around the world, and that really kind of inspired me to want to have a variety of nativity scenes myself. While I was there, I picked up this book called The Night of the Child, and the text in it is by Robert Benson, and the illustrations in it are all pictures from the nativity collection at the upper room. I love this book. I get it out every Christmas, and I especially love the text, actually the wonderful ways that this writer expresses um, thoughts about the different people in that you see in nativity scenes, you know, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, all of that. But I want to share with you just something uh, right at the beginning that he talks about, about the tradition of uh, nativities or, or the creche. He says, we are told that the tradition of the creche itself goes back to St. Francis of Assisi, another of God's chosen ones, whose actions and manners, like those of the prophets, were something less than socially acceptable. Those who speak for God are often difficult to listen to. As the story is told, however, Francis did not merely make a creche that one might set out on a table or a shelf. He built one that housed animals and lived in it with them for a time, perhaps a little bit like the live manger scenes one sees in church parking lots around Christmas 
though it is unlikely that Francis went home to a house in the suburbs each evening after the night's viewing was done. One way of commemorating his act, our bit of wood and glass and plaster and straw and clay and paper is pretty tame compared to his. But then we are pretty tame compared to him as well, a sure sign that we are not prophets, perhaps. Yet each year we pull our crash out of the closet and take it out of the box and set it up in some particular place. I have several uh, nativities that I keep out year round. And I wanna share with you just two very quickly that I have gotten just in the last four years. I was fortunate to be able to travel to the Holy Land uh, in November four years ago with Pastor Susan Patterson Sumwalt, Andrea Hatcher, and Pat Kissinger, all members of this, uh, who are members of this congregation. And while I was there, I, I purchased two unusual nativities. This first one is uh, showing Mary and Joseph and the Christ child in a boat. I loved the wood of it and the back of it, I think is just stunning. It was hand carved in Bethlehem. It is stamped Bethlehem on the bottom. And it, um, to me, just showed me a different aspect of the life that that young family may have had, times perhaps that they were out on the Sea of Galilee, uh, traveling in a boat and the symbolism that water was to have in Jesus' ministry. So that's a favorite. And the other I wanted to share with you is this one that's made of, um, felt, uh, felted wool. It was made in Palestine. It really depicts the tradition of Jesus being born in a cave rather than in a stable. And uh, Mary, Joseph, the Christ child, and a lamb are shown here. I really loved this. I actually bought this, I'm almost positive, in the gift shop that was by um, the tomb of Jesus, the place that, uh, uh, that uh, people visit, that pilgrims visit to commemorate Jesus rising from the dead. So I love this one. It was made in Palestine by a collective of people that include a number of people with disabilities. And uh, of course, all the proceeds from these sales go back to those artists. So those are just a couple of my favorites. Um, I have some more on display in my office and a lot of them at home and some that won't even make it out this year. But if you're around and you wanna see any more and I'm here too, I'd be happy to show you what I've got in my office. Merry Christmas. This is Jane Heideman, and she's going to tell you about her favorite ornament. Now, this is not my most beautiful ornament, but this is the ornament with the most memories. Our son came home from college with a dog named Winston, who fell in love with my next door neighbor, Ethel, who fell in love with Winston. When I went there for iced tea, she had a place for Winston. When she came to my yard, he joined us. If he saw her out and he was in, he fussed until I let him out. And she saw in somebody in Chicago who would make ornaments to, to what you want. And this is one, oops, here, where all the presents of the family, but at the top, is Winston's. And then she told me when she gave this to me that they were moving to California the first of the year. And so we have many memories. And Winston used to sit by the fence after she had moved waiting for her to come out. So this is my memory. Well, what are the names on the ornament? Well, it's our family. It's Diane and Tom and Bob and Don and Jane. And then the top one up there is Winston. And what's the story of the eggs on your tree? The eggs, our neighbors got together about 70 years ago, I think. And one of the girls knew how to do, or heard how to do this. So we used to do this in the summer, sit out in the backyard and work on the, the eggs, which takes a long time. Well, you blow out the insides, correct? Yes. And my mother used to do that. And then you take uh, uh, scissors, uh, manicure scissors, 
and cut around, paint in, paint out, and decorate. And decorate. Then you put something at the bottom which will hold it. The big problem is finding stuff small enough to go in. I found upstairs today, which uh, uh, a dancing girl that was that's from one of these eggs. Well, thank you, Jane. We really appreciate this. We're adding on to the other video from Jane Heidemann for her mantle, which you can see all different snowmen. Where'd you get all these, Jane? I got an awful lot of them at Remy Sales. People knew I was collecting them. They'd, they'd see a snowman, they'd give me a snowman. Uh, it's amazing how many to unpack and put up here. I think I'm about as far as I can go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sally Gibson, and I didn't share an ornament, but I shared an advent wreath that I made 40, more than 40 years ago. It's made out of cruel work, which was like embroidery, all embroidery kind of stitches, but it's done with wool threads instead. So when the boys were about five or eight, um, they would open up according to the numbers all the way around and find two of everything in the numbers. Um, sometimes it was coins and sometimes it was candy and sometimes it was marbles and the post office used to put out little folders of stamp collections and they both had an Olympics and cars and those kind of folders so sometimes they got stamps to put in their collections. The most fun were the Legos. Um, usually I would start with number one and that would be the instructions and then after that they would get two or four pieces or something to add to the Lego and we made a rescue squad or an ambulance or some kind of thing like that at the beginning and it ended up later with a lunar module. Um, but they always enjoyed opening them up and running downstairs and putting it together or finding what was there. A few years ago they were both home at independent times around Christmas and I hadn't put the wreath up and I had, um, I don't know, just not decorated that way. And independently, both of the boys said, Mom, you didn't put the advent wreath up. So I decided it was something that was in their memories and represented home. So ever since, it's been up every year. And this year, with our COVID non-travel Christmas, it will be there to remind me and them of all of our wonderful gatherings. Thanks for sharing. Good morning, I'm Chelsea Montague, and I'm here to share with you this morning about my favorite Christmas ornament. And I had a hard time choosing just one because Christmas is definitely a favorite time of year of mine. And when I was growing up, my family had a tradition that had to do with Christmas ornaments. So I'm very excited to share with you all about my favorite style of Christmas ornaments. So every year growing up, I grew up in Michigan, my family would go to the Michigan State University craft show. And it was so cool to see all the local vendors and see all the incredible things that they were able to make. They're so talented. So my parents would have us pick out a style of ornament, typically these um, little ornaments made out of clay or dough, and they would have the vendor put our name on them and add the year. And so it was so fun each Christmas to pull out the box and see, oh yeah, last year, you know, I got the cheerleading uh, ornament and you know, this year we chose a sledding one because we had so much fun sledding, whatever the case may be. But it's so fun now as a mom to hang those ornaments on my tree as an adult and talk to my boys about all the fun things that I did as a child. So here are some of those dough or clay ornaments. Here's one of me <laughs> sledding. You can see my name on the hat. And it, she's sitting on a cute little sled. Um, and it looks like 1996 is when I got this one. So that's so cute. You can kind of have her sledding down the tree. And this one was a special one for me. This was in 1999 when I joined the cheerleading team, even though I didn't have blonde hair. Apparently they didn't have a whole cheerleader with blonde hair. And she's been broken so many times and um, glued back together. But it just 
brings back so many fond memories of that special time in my life with my name on the back in the year. And even this one in 1993 with my little dog, Harry, even his name is on there. So cute in the little lamp. Um, so this is my favorite style of ornament is thinking back to my childhood and seeing all these special things that happened in my life and remembering special times with my family going to that craft show um, and decorating the Christmas tree every year. So it's a special time of year and I hope that you are all staying well and enjoying time in your own homes and staying safe. Merry Christmas. Hi, welcome to a sing-along time. I hope you're ready to take a big breath and sing some of these favorite Christmas carols that come from our hymnal. Sing-alongs were always one of my favorite things to remember as a kid growing up. Our family did it frequently in the evenings uh, during the month of December. Uh, I think my, as I reflect back, my parents did a really good job of kind of settling the home down in the evenings when really the month of December doesn't lend itself particularly well to being settled. And we would often have a short devotional at the Advent wreath, followed by singing carols together. It's really one of my, uh, it's really as an adult become one of my favorite memories to, to reflect back on. Mine too. We actually would go around our neighborhood. We went to our one neighbor. She loved it. And she was Jewish. <laughs> That's fantastic. We're going to start with Angels We Have Heard on High. Gloria and Excelsis Deo. Hit it. Angels we have heard on high sweetly singing for the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strains. Oh, uh -huh. 
Bethlehem, didn't it? That old little town? I love this one and seeing the fourth stanza where O Holy Child comes in. intro Silent Night in the German. Oh, 
What a joyous Thank celebration you. we have enjoyed. For you. Um, hope you enjoy it. Hi, Nana. Love you. Miss you. Hope to see you soon.
Christmas. Christmas, everyone. What a joyous celebration we have enjoyed today that has certainly put each and every one of us in a festive Christmas mood. We thank Rena and Rosemary for making this UMW Christmas time gathering possible. And to each of the participants, I know you join with me in thanks for their words of love and sharing in their family traditions. May all of our Christmas trees be filled with ornaments that have a story to tell. My dear friends, no matter where you are in your preparations for Christmas 2020, may you find peace, hope, joy, and love in your hearts because we welcome the birth of a baby, a baby in a manger who is the light of the world and is born the Prince of Peace. As we close this time together, please join me in prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, as you entered the world that starry night so many years ago, we are thankful that you filled our lives by the light of a single candle. We, like the wise men, look to a star over a stable. We, like the shepherds, are kneeling at a manger. We ask that the lamp of love, which eternally burns above, kindle a fire in our hearts. May joy radiate from us to show the world your love, which came to show us the way. Joy to the world, the carolers sing out as last minute shoppers scurry about, seeking that one special gift that will give Christmas morning a magical lift, only to find that the magical gift so desperately sought is the spirit of Christmas, which can never be bought. We hear the bells on Christmas day playing the old familiar carols, wild and sweet. And in those ringing bells, we hear a call for peace on earth, goodwill to all. Dear Jesus, at this time of celebrating your birth, our lives have been changed in ways we cannot control. Many of us will be without our loved ones around the shining Christmas tree. Many of us will be without the love of family and friends around our festive Christmas table. But through it all, we can be ever thankful to you for always being in our midst, reminding us that we are celebrating the birth of a baby, a gift from God in heaven to save us from the world around us, and give us peace, hope, joy, and love all the days of our lives. Amen. What a beautiful Christmas celebration that we have just seen. Just touches my heart and get a little teary. But I'd like to thank Neil and the vocalist for, for providing us with the beautiful music and the presenters for sharing their memories and their joys. This program was made possible by the dedicated, creative, and our friend, Mary Paul. 
and we thank you. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to all the women of the United Methodist Church for their tremendous generosity in the pledge to mission. Your money will be well served in the missions at home and in abroad. What a gift from UW, UMW. The holidays are our best time to reach out to our loved ones with greetings and warm wishes. Um, simply writing a handwritten note saying Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, or even a phone call will touch the lives of so many and just bring them joy. So please consider doing that this holiday season. May each of you enjoy Christ's love during the Christmas season and the new year ahead. Thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas. <laughs>